Here we go then, we're coming towards the end of the first season in our team career with Aston Martin. We're going to Mexico next, the home of Checo Perez. Let's get the admin done before that though. We've upgraded the weather centre, give it a little refurbishment in there, so that would be great for us in the race. We've only got one day left on our suspension research for next year's car. We've got five engineers assigned to that and the underfloor. Thought we'd do a quick standings update this time round. Still seventh in the constructors. And Esteban Ocon is tenth with Sebastian Vettel in eleventh in the driving constructors. And looks like they'll probably stay there for the rest of the season unless something happens. Suspension is complete for next season. And also on next season, our mind is focused towards Sebastian Vettel and what do we do about his contract position. He's got two months left on this contract. He demands £14.2 million pounds a year. I'm not sure we can afford that for one more year and we'll be looking to move to another driver. Alonso is my first thought, but, you know, could we be sneaky here? I think we're going to scout Lewis Hamilton. Obviously, nothing will come of it, but... You know, we could just show our interest and see what happens. But I do think we'll go with Fernando Alonso for a season. Oscar Piastri picks up another development point, And obviously the long-term goal is to put him in driver's seat number one. Now for Sebastian's last couple of races, we're going to give him a new engine. We'll pay the £1 million needed for that. As we come on to our performance targets for the race... We'll be hoping to finish above 15th and qualify above 15th with at least one car as well. That is Norma Esteban Ocon for us. So with that, let's get into the race and get into qualifying. Music is in the air this weekend, but it's not Mariachi you'll be hearing. It's going to be the roar of the engines and the cheers of the crowd. Formula One is back in the very heart of Mexico City. So as you can see here, on the first running Q1, Sebastian put his car into P16 and Esteban into P14. Now, I have absolutely messed up with Sebastian's run here. We went out just a bit too early. You can see the gap between him and Ocon, and now Vettel is in all that traffic. I cannot see him improving his lap, and that is on my head. We really have not given Sebastian optimal opportunity he set a green sector one but that's because he didn't come into the traffic until the start of sector two i imagine that sector two is going to be down it is yellow sector two we've we owe sebastian one here we've really not give him the right um strategy ocon look at all that clear track he's got i should expect him to uh, improve a little bit he's set a green sector one sebastian comes around the line does he improve from p16 no, it's a yellow sector three as well. So he doesn't improve his time. Esteban also doesn't improve his middle sector with a yellow sector and a yellow last sector. So both of them don't improve. I can see Esteban getting knocked out very quickly. Yes, he is. P uh, P16, P17. For P yeah, P16, P17 for both of the boys. So we've really messed them up in our strategy. We have to take that one on the chin for the management team. Let's get into the race though. The grid is packed and there's electricity in the air, but there's no surprises in that. It's race day. Aston Martin did a good job during qualifying, and they're pretty much where everyone expected them to be on the grid. Now it's up to them to defy expectations during the race itself. Okay, so let's hope we get the strategy better for the race than we do for the qualifying. Seb will start 20th because he took an engine penalty that we've shown you before. Ocon is going to start 10th because of all them penalties. As the sun continues to shine, it seems like nothing can dampen the mood of excitement here at the track. And there we've got Esteban Ocon. What will happen next? We're about to find out at the Mexican Grand Prix. It's lights out and away we go. So here we go then, Esteban starts in P10 because of all the major penalties and he's starting on soft tyre as well. Let's hope he gets a little slipstream here from Kevin Magnussen in the Haas car. Vettel down in P20, we'll play the long game with him. You look at the cars that are down there with him, those signs, Leclerc, the Alpine a Stroll. All cars that have taken engine penalties, Ocon switching places there with Danny Ricciardo but we get that one back off him. This section of track is a double DRS zone for when DRS is open in a couple of laps time. Just 
trying to get past Lando Norris now on the other McLaren. It's little McLaren sandwich for Esteban for the start of this race. Sebastian not making any moves up just yet, but he's close to Mick Schumacher in the Haas. As Ocon pulls out alongside, he looks like he's going to have a little look at Norris then. Doesn't bother with it. Best not to ride the curb there on that S section. Sebastian does gain a place now, gets past Mick Schumacher and he'll be chasing down Charles Leclerc. He is actually making some time up to him, it looks like. Quite interesting that we would hear a battle with the Ferrari. Oh, wow, look at that dive bomb there by Fernando Alonso on Danny Ricciardo. And that could be Fernando Alonso for us next year if we decide to take him on board. That's obviously Fernando wants to as well. I do think we will let go of Sebastian, who's lost the place there. Back into P20. Not a great start to the race for him. So we end lap one, and we've just held the places that we had. Going into that, we're having another look at Lando Norris here on board with Ocon. Is he going to try it up the inside? No, just backs in. Doesn't fancy it. Keep his tyres from wearing out, going too aggressive early on. So DRS is enabled. Now we're on lap five. And look at this. The DRS flap opens up for us. And it is a just a DRS train down the home straight for Esteban. Just going to have a look at Lando Norris here. Can he make any move? Joe Guan Yu in that train as well. Kevin Magnussen at the start of it. So we're telling Ocon, use the overtake button. Because what is happening now is signs Sonoda Alonso. They're catching up because of that DRS. Ocon looks like he's going to make a move up inside of Norris. Norris takes that position back on the corner. Esteban is a wide sweeps round this double right hander not optimal because he doesn't get both apexes but he does make a position back up on Lando Norris as they go side by side into the S's the gaining on Zhou Guan Yu whilst doing this Esteban's still in the lead Norris has to ride that curb Norris can he get a better exit here who gets DRS they all get DRS I assume they do so oh look at that Ocon comes out in front of Lando so he's moved himself up into P8. Oh, Joe Guan Yu throws it up the inside. Can't get the move done. But the problem will be here is that all the cars behind are going to have DRS. I don't think we was in range of Kevin Magnussen. Will our DRS flap open? No, it won't. So we are now under threat from Norris. Joe Guan Yu, Carlos Sainz. We wasn't close enough to Kevin Magnussen for the DRS. We're still on overtake mode in the RS. Lando Norris goes up the inside on that curve. We match him. Norris keeps position for now. But the problem will be here because we won't have DRS because it's a double helping and Sainz goes around the outside. And now so does Zhou Guan Yu. We drop back down. Oh no, we retake that position from Zhou Guan Yu. No, Zhou Guan Yu takes back a fuzz. Now we're out the points. We're into P11. What has happened there? What a bit of racing that is. So we're going to have a quick check on Sebastian Vettel. He's down in P19, but he's making some moves against the two Williams. He overtook Nicholas Satifi a couple of laps ago when I was giving Alex Albon a bit of a headache and having a good battle with him. And he's not too far away from the Haas and Alpine of Schumacher and Stroll in front. Oh, Allah, Albon gets past him, but who's got the DRS? It looks like they both got the DRS, which is almost impressive considering they're definitely outside of the one second zone of Lance Stroll in front. Can Sebastian get back past Alex Albon? We're switching positions here again, but I think he should do him on the inside here now. Yes, he does. This is good. So we're on lap 10 now. And Esteban Ocon is chasing down a Ferrari and Carlos Sainz. Obviously, DRS helping him down this long home straight. But look at this. He's going up the inside. He's not even taking a slipstream from him. Goes into this first corner side by side. 
is in front at one point. Carl Sainz edges his car back out in front, but the thing here is going to be straight line speed, both of them with DRS now. So as uh, Sebastian comes to lap 19, his pit window starts to open, got a yellow flag in sector one. That's because Pierre Gasler, what's happened here? It was the Alpha Tauri driver involved. Oh, Gasly spun it and put it in the wall. Unfortunate for him. So with both our drivers completing their pit stops after that round, first round of pit stops, we are in P16 with Vettel and P12 with Esteban Ocon. Actually, just up to P10 now. So we've come to Sebastian's second pit stop of the race. And I'm just thinking we might be able to push these hard tyres out a little bit and get on to the soft for the last like 10 or so laps. So if we just eke this soft at this hard tyre run for another two laps, we can get on the softs. And I think that's what we'll go for. So lap 59, Sebastian on them soft tyres. He's in P17, just overtakes Danny Ricardo. He's also got Lando Norris up in front as well. Can he make a double overtake on the McLarens here? That'd be amazing if he can. As he, as he has got past Lando Norris there. Sebastian Vettel making some moves on them soft tyres. So we're up to lap 67 of the race. Only four laps left to go. Ocon is in P10. Now he's got three seconds gap to Yuki Tsunoda, but he's also 4.8 away from his next rival in Zhou Guan Yu. So we come to the final lap of the race. We're going to pick up a point here with Esteban Ocon, which, to be honest, is great news for us to just get back into the point. Sebastian's had a good effort. Sebastian with a good effort up into P15 there. He finishes the race. Esteban's about to come over the line in P10. Great result for him. So here we go, we're 10th and 15th on the, the race results. Up into P10 for Esteban Ocon and P11 for Sebastian in the driver standings and in the constructors where it matters the most for us. We're in P7, we pick a point up and Alpine don't, so that closes that gap towards them. Now, not the most exciting of races, unfortunately we only picked up one point, so make sure you check out Brazil, we're hoping to do a little bit better. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. Cheers for watching.